Hi. Hi, world. I just got my lookbooks and I'm looking through it and I'm super excited because the concept is, you know, coming together. I'm really excited for the new rebranding. But the name of this collection is called Il Futuro. And that's not me writing that because, you know, I write a little bit better than that. But, <laughs> but this is actually the handwriting from an 11-year-old because I taught a class. I mentored a class in Lower Manhattan. And it was a class filled with 11-year-old scholars. And um, basically what I did is I went into their classroom and sort of showed them my world. And my world is comprised of not only the jewelry, but it's the inspiration and the interpretation and all of these different um, things I was able to communicate with this class of 11-year-olds who really, when you walked into their room, it was like they were playing Monopoly or something, and they're like, who's this girl coming in here? And they loved you. Yeah, they were like, whoa, whoa, and they were telling them about who I work with and the techniques about how you actually make jewelry because I think it's really important for the public to understand what goes into the fabrication of jewelry because if not, then jewelry becomes some sort of instant gratification thing and it, it's not. Jewelry will never be an instant gratification thing. It's something that takes time and thought and there's so many concepts with bead jewels. I wanted the 11 year olds to start first, to understand it first. And so when I was going in there, I was like, okay guys, here's my stuff. And I like literally threw it all over their Monopoly board. And they're like, oh my God. And their instinct was to take it and just start putting it on, putting it on. And they're like, with this nail ring, for example, this is the new nail ring. And they're guys and they're girls. And the guys grabbed this one guy named Junior, like this big lat Latino guy. Every single kid in there was Latino, and then there was one black kid. And all of these kids just started, like kids in a candy store, taking all of this fine jewelry with diamonds in it, and it's, you know, totally not described to them first, and their first instinct was to put it on. And they started, this guy Junior was like, whoa, do you put this right here? And I'm like, yeah, you do. Um, amazing that you just put it there. And that instinct, first off, Junior's 11, so he's still raw. His thoughts are still untouched, even though they live a very difficult life in Manhattan. They still have an open mind. And so for me, I was like, oh, that's interesting. Like, a boy put on a nail ring. Okay, so he's not a homophobe yet. That's cool. <laughs> right? And so these kids were putting on stuff, and... You know, I was telling them about how I name things, and I was like, well, kids, like, this is called a handlet. This is a bracelet for the hand, right? How and they're, comfortable is that? It's totally comfortable, because, <laughs> let me tell you why. Because when you bend your hand, when you bend your fingers, there are, all these, there are these joints that are frames of reference for just support. Yeah. And so what I need to do is I need my clients and my wearers to be able to do this, and to function on every day. So what I've done is I've created something that's static here and empty negative space here so you can bend and fold comfortably. This is the one I was telling you about. Uh -huh. <laughs> and then the same concept goes here. So it's one point here, one point here, so I'm still able to move. In fact, I barely feel it. So I'm telling this to my kids, and I'm like, so this is called a handlet kid. So now I want you to name this piece. And so I show them this piece, which is, I didn't know what the name of it was at that moment. But basically this, this girl, her name was Maria Sanchez. I go, okay, so this could be a necklace, but where would you wear it? And she goes, okay, well, let me see. Okay, let me see. And she has like long brown hair and bangs. And she's like, all right, and I was like, okay, I just had a photo shoot the other day. Let me show you where I put it. And I go like this. And I was like, Maria, how do you feel? She's like, oh, shoot, you did not. You just put, oh, my God, it's in my bangs. This is a banglet. So she <laughs> named it a banglet because it was in her bangs. And it's that. It's that naivete. It's that inspired, raw, candid look at what I'm doing that... I mean, they were inspiring to me. I think I probably got so much more from this experience than I can't even say for them, but it was so inspiring to be with a crowd that was embracing everything that they were experiencing 
You know, there was no judgment passed on me. There was no, um, you know, preconceived notion about my work. So it was very, really raw and amazing experience. What's going on here? And so these pieces, based on, remember that ring that you have, that's mm -hmm. solid silver that's in three parts? Yeah. So basically what I did was take that technique and that concept, and I divided it into more negative space. So this is called the Blade Runner, because once again, the collection is called Il Futuro, which is based on the future. And so when I was talking to this, these kids, what I wanted was to get an unbridled shot into what their future was going to be by using my jewelry to interpret what their future was going to be. Because, you know, our past's idea of what their future was going to be, in my opinion, has fallen wildly short of what it could have been. If we look at Blade Runner from the 80s, like the ultimate sci-fi flick, you, you're thinking, oh my God, so where are our floating buildings? Where are our hovering this and all of our lit up stuff here and it doesn't exist now. So what I'm trying to do is sort of formulate the future of jewelry using these candid raw looks from a new generation of kids. So this one is called the Blade Runner, the inspiration for the entire collection. And I just put it together and it has the articulated look but without having any of the uh, non-movement. Because with articulated rings, you get the look, but then you can't hail a cab, you can't type, you can't take photos. And so with this one, you can do all of that. <laughs> so see, it's one, it's one part, two part, and then the third part. And then my wearer could wear it here. She could, or he could, wear it here. And basically what I wanted to do was divide these three parts into one separate piece and give the wearer all these different choices. And then what I've done is I've implemented a four-prong setting. And a four-prong setting is a very basic setting that jewelers use to set the stones. So I'm working in white diamonds and black diamonds this season. And our colorways are rose gold, white, and yellow. And with this four-prong setting, what I'm doing is sort of communicating this the basic use of a jewelry um, finding, but then what I'm doing is I'm going to be building with it. So not just putting something on display like a diamond, but I'm building with it. So I've created a link. So what I do is I stack one four prong setting into the other one. And so what I've done is I've created sort of like a new technique for making a link chain, using a chain itself plus a four prong setting. So it's sort of like that twist that I do with a lot of my stuff. And the kids were totally, totally into it. They're like, that's so cool, you can do that. And I was like, kids, you can do anything. You know, so that idea is something that they were able to sort of hold on to. And it was really, really gratifying to be around them. And, and then I have, stones. yeah, the stones. I'm going to show you the, these new pieces, the new stuff. 